So in part one of the basics of stark trail photography, we looked at equipment, we looked at camera settings, we saw how you must plan your shot and aim, and actually taking your shots as well. So in this edition, we're going to talk about post-processing using freeware software, Star Stacks, Star Trails, and Sequator. So we're also going to show you how a cell phone video was made. Okay, so if we look at them, so here they are all clustered together, Sequator, Star Stacks, and Star Trails. Uh, let's start with Star Stacks. It's one of the easy ones. And if we open that up, you will see the interface is quite simple. So over there you have your file, input and save and start and stop. Uh, and the controls over there. You can also see it says to drop your files. So I've picked about 50 images I took in Sutherland a while back of salt. So if I drop them in there, uh, you can look at images individually, even with this program. And um, then this button here is where you will import your dark frames. So I didn't actually take any darks in this case. So therefore I didn't, um, I don't have any. And that's of course where you tick, you would have to, um, uh, to, to add, uh, to activate the dark frames to work. So if you come over here, you'll see over here are the different uh, blending modes. I would recommend play with them, try them all out. And uh, you'll see in a minute how easy it is to remember which is which in the file names. So definitely play play with them. Gap filling is one of the common ones. It, it's just a bit slower. Um, and that is uh, depending on how far your images were taken apart, uh, how your zoom factor was, that's quite easy. Uh, I'll go with Lighten, which is works good on an on a image that's taken in dark conditions. And it is quite quick for demonstration purposes. So all you do now is you just say go. And um, the program will run. Work through the images. You can see the progress over there. And it will work through them quite quickly, quite efficient. 50 images done in 9.24 seconds. So this is your resultant image. And if you look at some of the other modes here, comet mode, leave little trails. I can maybe show you that. So if you do that, you get, okay, this is actually probably not enough images to, but you can start seeing, seeing the effect there. So this is just for fun, really. And then if you process them in the reverse order, it'll put them in a different folder. And then you can use that for time-lapse uh, videos if you want. And this function here, cumulative, is also good for time lapses where it'll add the progress as it goes along so that you can actually simulate what you've got over here. So if I just switch off combat mode for a moment and just redo them again, so we can store them now in the same folder such that we can compare them afterwards. So the last step is just to save and if I just save them all in the same place, we can compare them afterwards and um, see what the results are. Uh, you'll see the file name is quite nice. It tells you what program was used, what images were used, and what blending mode was used. So it's all in the file name if you use it by default. And then you can save. You have different file types as well. Um, this is just a JPEG. Okay, so on to the next one. If we now look at Star Trails, which is in a way actually even simpler. You can see the interface very, very simple. Open images, open dark frames, save your image, average foreground, and do it. Star Trails and this, you can also make a video from this, so you don't even have to do this afterwards. Okay, so let's go and open the images. Okay, so we're back at the sample pictures. Grab all of them, Control A, open up, and then you will see them over there. See the dark frames will be listed here if you have any. So this is what you will do next. Of course, we don't have any. Um, and then this averaging, 
I'm actually not 100% sure how it works. The images will be averaged to get good signal to noise, right? The resulting image is a slight, is uh, lightened and combined with the star tile image in blend mode lighten. Okay, so this only works with, with lighten then. And then you can choose how many, how many images you want. And then you, and it does that for you. Okay, and then at, at this point is where you get the different options. So this um, lighten screen blend mode uh, is sort of the, the, the default one. Um, if we just compare it with the one, it says it's slightly sh slower. So if we just do the same that we've done in star stacks. If we just go to the falling stars, that was similar to the comet mode that was in star stacks. Um, and again, similar to star stacks, you can save e every image as it builds it up and that you can use for an animation or a time lapse afterwards. Okay, so if we go, then it'll, it'll just start doing its thing. And um, so remember, this is now this sort of comet mode. You see is a progress bar at the bottom, um, slightly slower compared to star stacks, um, but still a good rate. And you'll see the little comets for me. Uh, you also saw that you can decide on which way to taper. So, um, so this is forming little triangles in the direction that the rotation was. Um, So there's your resultant image almost. Okay, so uh, if we just compare apples with apples, so if we just switch off the falling stars mode, and um, uh, like I say, this one actually gives you slightly better quality, but to compare apples with apples, let's just uh, go for this one and uh, see how the two compare. We can speed this up. Okay, so there's your resulting image. It's always a one-to-one, -one, I think. And uh, it looks fairly similar to the other one. And then if we save it, and we'll just put it in the same folder as before, and we can compare them afterwards. It asks for the compression ratio of JPEG. I've just chosen 90% which is the default, you can do it better and then probably get a slightly better image. That's it for Star Trails. Okay, and then finally we look at Sequitur. Now this is the most complicated of them all and it's got the most options. And uh, so it's got a bit more under the bonnet. Sequitur works with these uh, colored buttons. And if anything is red, you first must get it green to carry on otherwise it won't let you do anything so the first thing at once are the star images and it um, i've already browsed to it so here they all are the same images as before noise images are their name for dark images as before and again i didn't have any so i'm going to skip that step and then the other one that's still red is output so we need to go and pick so we're in the same folder as before, and we will call it Sequitor, and just like that. And for comparison, we'll make it JPEG again, um, and go for that. So now everything is picked over there. So this lot here is a lot of options that you've got. By default, it is on Align Stars, so it wants to stack images. And so if you want to go to Star Trails, you pick Star Trails. So the motion effect here is again the same as the comet in star stacks. I'm not going to pick anything here because these these you can play with these settings. Many of them don't really affect much if you do star trails. So some of these are more for stacking images. All we do now is we push start. And you will see it runs very quick. Um, quite amazing. This is an amazing piece of software. Only six seconds. Um, and then if we say close, there's your resulting image and you can see the comet uh, action there again. So if we switch that off, um, now we should be uh, the same as, other, as the others before. And then we hit start again. This one always 
uh, works on the same file name which you've set up there. So if you worried, if you want to keep that, then you need to rename. So you need to say no and then go and pick another one. But I'm just going to override that so I'm not too worried. And uh, again, running very, very quick and going through all the files. And then we're done. And there's your resulting image. Okay, so if we want to go and compare then, let's have a look and see what they look like. So there's our secret tour. See, it's quite a, a bit bigger file. Um, and uh, so the smallest one is actually done by Star Trails. So that gives you a sort of indication of quality, but let's see if we can see any differences. So there's our sequitor file. Um, there's our star trails. And there's a star stacks. So not really much in it. So uh, the same program, the same thing done by three programs, giving very similar results. Again, like I say, you have got more to play with here. So that is obviously what you will try and do next. So to use a cell phone, you definitely need a clamp like this, because again, the cell phone must be kept steady for the duration of the shot. Um, so you would, yeah. So you would then put your cell phone in the clamp, make sure that the clamp doesn't push any buttons, and then off you go and take your pictures. So the Huawei has got an amazing feature. So if you go to its more function, there's a thing called light painting. There's a thing called traffic trails, light graffiti, soaky water. There's a thing called star trails. <clears throat> now this works amazingly well. It can cope with differing light levels. So if I just point it to the west now and then start recording and leave that going for a while. that Scorpio that's over there and then the bright stars will start trailing okay so you get the idea and then if you want to make the foreground a bit more interesting you can always paint it with light and uh, bring it out a bit of course if you overdo it then you've done it so you don't have to have a second chance, unfortunately. But that gives you some options you can do with a cell phone. 